Hello, I'm sorry if my voice is a bit more annoying than usual, I've got a bit of a cold, which is one of the reasons I haven't posted any videos in a while, but I thought I'd do this one of the plot of Measure for Measure. For those of you that are doing the same exam that I'm doing, which is the Ella 2 exam, you're not allowed to take the play into the exam with you, so I thought I'd try to get the plot into my head, and I thought, what better way of doing that than by writing a poem? So I've written a poem, it's all in iambic pentameter with rhyming couplets, it's pretty rubbish because I've not really spent that long on it. But it goes through the acts, scene by scene, you know, breaks them down a tiny bit, you get a bit of detail about each scene, what goes on in it, and it's essentially a good overview, a good reminder of what happened in the play. You probably need to have read the play just to understand what I'm speaking about, because I go quite quickly, but let's just see how it goes. Oh, and just another thing, I, I like listen back to it, I sound dreadful, because my voice is totally gone, look, this is me at the end of the reading of it, but... I'm not taking myself too seriously here. I thought I'd just put that out there before people think, oh, look, she thinks she's so good at poetry, but she can't write a poem to save her life. No, I know I'm pretty rubbish, and I know I can't read poems out loud and I speak too fast, and it's all rhyming terribly, but, you know, just roll with it. Measure for Measure starts with the Duke's speech all about how Vienna he must leave, and thus chooses to leave in charge of things Angelo to see what trouble he brings. Though he tries to resist, the Duke ignores. Now Angelo controls the city's laws. And that is the end of Act 1, Scene 1. Angelo's in charge, and the Duke has gone. We're moving on now to a lower class, Lucio and his mates having a laugh as they make jokes about the French disease using puns such as three pile of peace. Overdone comes in and she's got some goss, Angelo's working to show who's boss. Claudio had sex, now he's gonna die, which kinda sucks cause Jew was fast his wife. Lucio will talk to Claudio's sis, off he rushes to see nearly none is. Now scene three begins in media res, and the friar listens as the duke says that he wishes to stay in a disguise to see whether dear Angelo abides to his original moral stance or great power turns him into something more. Scene four takes us to a religious place where dear Isabella's quick to make haste to ensure the rules are as strict as can be in her new home of God, the nunnery. Then Lucio enters and brings bad news. Her brother's head he is about to lose. But here's the old trick, Lucio says. Izzy has the power to save his head. And thus, as Act One comes to a swift end, Isabella's brother she must defend. Act 2 begins with quite a fierce debate, the two lords discussing Claudio's fate. Free Claudio, good Lord Aeschylus chimes, but alas, he's met by Sir, he must die. Then comes a scene intended to be joke, about the issues of the lower class folk, the case of the stewed prunes and Elbow's wife, who was believed to have a second life, working in brothel as a prosy too. This was soon proven to be untrue, and Elbow came to complain to the lords, but alas, he mixed up all of his words, and thus of fair justice he was robbed and then the lords took away his old job, saying he'd had it for quite enough time after telling Pompey steer clear of crime. Scene 2, Angelo meets Isabella and pretty much straight away he tells her Claudio broke the law so he must die. Lucio persuades her that she must try to make him change his mind for he sees hope. She talks about power, still he says nope. The length of her monologue start to grow and she speaks of justice. Still, he says no. Then Angelo asks her to come the next day. And as she gets up, leaves and walks away, Angelo performs a soliloquy on his sinful lusting for sweet Izzy. Dramatic tension grows. What will he do? You'll find out as you're going through Act 2. In Act 2, Scene 3, the Duke's a friar, which builds more tension for he's a liar, telling Juliet that she must repent for poor Claudio rendered her pregnant. Scene 4 sees Angelo and Izzy meet. This time, Angelo has a trick up sleeve. He says, If you want your bro to be free, you must break the rules of the nunnery. Isabel pretends not to have a clue what good Lord Angelo wants her to do, and thus he tells her that he'll speak more gross, tells her, Have sex, or your brother will go off to be executed for his crime. But still, Isabella's faith must take prime, and so she says that she will not do it. Her is off to her bro to talk through it. Act 3 begins in a deep dark prison, with the Duke going on and on and on about religious stuff, how death is sleep until death Claudio is ready to greet. Then in comes Isabella, his sister. He asks her what comfort she brought with her. She gives the illusion of preferred response, then tells him his head must be chopped right off, but says, if I let Angelo rape me, he promises to set you brother free. His answer, she did not want him to give. Sweet sister, he said to her, let me live. 
Isabel uses strong adjectives now, but the Duke comes in to break up the row and then tells Claudio lie after lie before speaking to Isabella to try to persuade her to join his cunning plan. Talks of Mariana, a young woman, who to Angelo she was nearly wed, and the Duke decides to try the old bed trick in an attempt to set Claudio free, such that Mariana and not Izzy would go and have sex with Lord Angelo. Now on to Act 3, Scene 2, we must go. In this scene, we see the strong changes made by good Lord Angelo to show his hate of sexual corruption in the city. So these changes are full of irony, because we know Angelo's secret lust. In comes Pompey, who has some misplaced trust in Lucio. Alas, he turns his back on this board of a lower social class, making jokes in order to entertain, before meeting Duke in disguise again. Dramatic irony now floods this scene, for Lucio makes jokes which are quite mean about the Duke and to his disguised face. Not till Act 5 will he know his mistake. Then Aeschylus comes in, but he seeks through the Duke's disguise, and this is nicer to the Duke. Goes on to flatter him silly before the Duke gives a soliloquy in rhyming iambic pentameter about his plan with pure Mariana. In Act 4, we meet Mariana, who sits and waits whilst a boy sings to her. Isabella shares with her the big plan. Mariana says she'll sleep with her man, for she still loves him and she wishes to wed, which will happen if she hops in his bed. Back to the prison for Act 4, Scene 2. Provost has something for Pompey to do. He wishes him to chop off two men's heads. For Lord Angelo wants Claudio dead. Pompey says yes after some lower class bants, as Duke comes up with yet another plan deciding to swap the head of good Claude with the head of another condemned board named Barnardine and asks Provost to lie such that the Duke can save Claudio's life. In scene three, we see a flaw in Duke's plan, for it seems Barnardine is not a man who wishes to just throw his life away, and so the good Duke's plan is forced to change. Provost must use the head of Ragazine, an old pirate who, alas, last night died, to trick Angelo into having belief that Claudio is dead so can be freed. Lucio comes back and looks like a fool when he tells the friar Duke that he is a tool. Scenes 4, 5 and 6 are really quite short, building up to the climax in Mock Court. Scene 4, the two lords begin to fretter as they discuss the Duke's summons letter. The Duke builds up a crowd of some fine men to greet them as he returns to Vienne. Friar Peter visits the two women and says he's found a mighty place for them in the big crowd to see the Duke show down as his announcements turn Vienna round. Act 5 is one massive and boring scene in which Isabella shares what has been happening between her and Angelo. Alas, alas, no one believes her though, and the Duke orders her to be sent away, which is the start of an elaborate play which he sets in motion just to build up to his proposal to the not-so-nun that Mariana offers evidence, but won't you her face to prove her presence until ordered by her husband, says she, and this proves to be quite a mystery. Though Angelo tells her, show your face, which she does and brings Angelo disgrace by telling all of their past engagement. But look, here comes the disguised Duke again. Who doesn't last long before he's unmasked, leaving poor old Lucio quite aghast. For oops, he slandered the Duke to his face. But that's for later, for the Duke makes haste to propose to Isabella, soon wife, before punishing to set all things right. Angelo, after some persuading force, allows Mariana to run love's course by marrying her as was meant to be, and this whole love story ran happily. Next, Lucio was made to pay and was punished in a similar way. Marry the prostitute who bore your child, the Duke thus said, for your insults were vile. The play draws to a close through the Duke's speech, and the end of this poem we have reached. That is probably something you're quite glad of that we've reached the end of the poem. Towards the end, I had to stop it loads because my voice was totally going. But anyway, I hope it's helped get the plot back into your head, and that my rhyming didn't totally mess you up. Good luck in the exam. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.